So going back to broader EVPN context, why am I living in a VRF world? What is my use case here? So I'm going to introduce to you three different VRFs that we're going to use on every device. Okay. One of them you're already familiar with, which is the traditional VRF. So that's, I declare it as a VRF, IP VRF. If I do show IP route, I can specify a VRF. So that's, we're going to use that. The next one is called a Mac VRF, Mac VRF. This is going to be a discrete forwarding space that we're going to use to forward layer two addresses. Mm -hmm. So what goes okay. in here? Mac addresses. Now, they, we don't, it, you know, this is done as IP VRF or IP instance, IP instance VRF or whatever it is on the local device. Oh. Um, this is done as a VLAN. Local. Okay. So how does layer two typically, how, do, how does one switch learn about the MAC addresses on another switch? Uh, learn about the addresses on another switch. Mm -hmm. How does Mac learning happen traditionally? Well, traditionally, it's it's broadcast, flood and learn, uh, unknown yep. unicast flooding, that that process, yeah. I, for a minute, yep. I was like, we, wait a minute, they don't exchange Mac addresses between switches. What are you asking me? They don't. But, yeah. yeah, they don't, but we have to learn them somehow. And right. we, learn, yeah. we do it by flood and learn. So we learn, the local switch learns it, then it floods it. The receiving, the other switches in the mm -hmm. topology, they, they get the flood, and then they learn it. So it's flood yes. and learn. We're learning flood. We're not doing that anymore. Uh, locally, uh, we're going to have a VLAN, and then we're going to have a VXLAN ID, a VXLAN segment. And an EVPN, if you're using physical switches, every VXLAN segment, so if we, for example, a VXLAN segment 10001 needs to be assigned to a local VLAN. So you're saying VLAN segment. Um, I'm thinking VXLAN network identifier. Is that something different, mm -hmm. or are those the same terms? Same thing. VNI. Okay. Yep. So, so when I say VXLAN segment, and I mean VNI virtual network, virtual uh, VXLAN um, network identifier. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. There's a lot of acronyms here. <laughs> so if I say VXLAN ID, VXLAN segment, VNI, I mean the same thing. Mm hmm. So we got a mapping that's going from uh, every VLAN uh, into every VXLAN segment. There's a there's a one-to-one mm -hmm. -one relationship there. And the other thing that this MAC VRF is called, or this MAC VRF is called, is a layer two VNI. This yeah. operates exactly like, um, well, not exactly like, um, the data plane is exactly like a VLAN. This is the stretched VLAN. So that way, if I have two devices, keep the colors uh, consistent here. So the tunnel is between these two VXLAN segments. And if I have a device that's attached, and they're in the same, they'll be on the same subnet. Dot twelve. This will be a slash twenty-four. This will allow me to exchange uh, Ethernet frames between the two. Yes. The only thing that goes into a MAC VRF is, is uh, the only routes that we put into a MAC VRF are MAC addresses. Okay. Yep. So uh, effectively, it's a bridging table. Yes. Okay. And locally, you can do show uh, MAC address table um, or the equivalent command to see what, the, see what is learned locally. So what will happen is, um, so let's say this is uh, leaf 1 and this is leaf 2. When leaf one learns about the host one, so we show IP addresses here, but we don't really care about IP addresses uh, in the layer two VRF or the, the MAC VRF. 
it's got a MAC address. So let's say it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Yep. And the other one's the same, but 0, 2? Yeah. Okay. Because I don't have any OUIs memorized. <laughs> Actually, I do have one memorized, but it's Cisco's. So um, Leaf1 learns about this MAC address. And it floods it to all the local ports on that VLAN. So, you know, the, that it still does some flooding, but it doesn't load. Again, way. just in the traditional way that we would deal with uh, mm -hmm. switching, switching and bridging, yeah. Yeah, so locally connected interfaces to that VLAN would get a normal flood in the traditional sense. Plain but old layer addition, two switching, yes. But, okay, but in yeah. addition... In addition, we need, to, we need to get leaf to this MAC information. So what we do is we generate a route. Well, okay, so this is important. Leaf 2 is not connected at layer 2 to leaf 1. So you can't do Correct. the traditional flooding. So this is what we're talking about. There is now an eVPN mechanism so that that 0, 01 MAC address is going to be able to be learned by leaf 2. Yep, leaf 1 and 2 are only connected through a layer 3 connection. There is no VLAN 101 on leaf 1 is completely isolated at this point from VLAN 101 on leaf 2. That layer 3 underlay that we were talking about, yeah, via a spine. Mm -hmm. Yes, via multiple spines yep. probably, but yeah. Yep. So um, in order for leaf 2 to learn about the MAC address that we learned on leaf 1, we have to use a route. So leaf 1 will generate a route. It's called a type 2 route. A type 2 EVPN route specifically that mm -hmm. is going to be living within our multi protocol BGP. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that type 2 route is going to have a route distinguisher on it, which again we talked about is not that important, but it is going to have a route target. So route targets are one, it's uh, one number colon another number. It could be an IP address for the first number, it could be um, something else. I'm just going to use these two numbers, 101 and 101, because that's the VLAN ID, we might as well use that. I could use, I could use the VXLAN ID, 10001, 10001. It doesn't really matter what I use, I just needs to match on the other side. And, and where we're putting this in from a VRF perspective is ultimately this is going to end up into the bridging table for the particular VLAN of the destination leaf? Yep. So the layer two, the bridging table is going to be the discrete forwarding space. Got it. Okay. So there's going to be a map on leaf two. So leaf two needs to be configured for this so that when, it, when leaf two gets a route, It'll see this type 2 route through either eBGP or IBGP through route reflector, whatever it is. It's going to get this route. It's going to look at the route target, and it, then it's going to know that it needs to install this MAC address in its local forwarding table. And the port will be typically like, um, it'll say like VX1. That's the port, which means um, if you, if this layer two VLAN gets an Ethernet, gets a MAC address destined for 00001, it's kind of cut off over there, then send it out through the VXLAN tunnel. And then the tunnel knows to send it to leaf one because the, uh, uh, because the, um, not only does that layer two forwarding space get that, that route target, but so does the VXLAN tunnel. If we were to draw this back to uh, take all the EVPN and the layer three underlays out and say we were just to stick a cable between leaf one and leaf two and make them just like any pair of switches, what would we, what would that cable mm -hmm. be between leaf one and leaf two? It'd be a VLAN trunk in Cisco parlance or a tagged VLAN link. How would uh, mm -hmm. leaf two know that that flooded MAC address, that uh, zero one address that we're sending over belongs to VLAN 101? It'd be tagged. It, so when the right. when that 802.1q tag would say hey vlan 101 this is what this is a member of oh okay so how do we replicate all that functionality in the evpn space everything you just showed us so to me the route target is kind of an 802.1q tag or at least performing a similar function yep it's performing a very similar function but instead we're doing it in the control plane instead of the data plane because an 802.1q tag is just part of the data plane mm -hmm. it's part of the packet itself 
Uh, whereas uh, with the route tags, or the route targets rather, in fact, it's easy to accidentally call it a route tag because <laughs> we're basically <laughs> tagging this route. Yeah. So it gets installed locally. Um, and then let's say uh, Leaf 2 did not have VLAN 101. It would get the route, it would put it in its rib, but it would not go into the hardware because it doesn't have any route targets for it. So it wouldn't need to program it into its forwarding space. It wouldn't have to take up any TCAM or CAM space. That's something that's different here, actually. When the Mac is learned, and now it gets a frame destined for that Mac, let's say Leaf 2 needs to send a frame to uh, that O1 Mac address that's hanging off of Leaf 1, in the forwarding table somewhere, there's got to be an entry that says, send it to this VTAP, this VXLAN tunnel endpoint, so that the switch, yes. the device needs to know to do an end cap. Yep, so that, that route, that type 2 route is going to include, it's going to include the route target, which we need to, um, for the local, for the, for the devices that receive that route, it needs to, it needs somewhere needs to know where what what discrete forwarding space to put it, and in this case, uh, Leaf Two is configured to put it into the discrete forwarding space of VLAN 101. Mm -hmm. So that's why we call it a MAC verf, even though we don't we're not, we're not using a verf like in a, a traditional sense where it's like IP verf instance and then we you know do that, but we're treating this VLAN as a verf mm -hmm. because we're giving it routes just like we would do exchange routes for other verfs. And um, it, the reachability information. So we always have here's the address, and then we also have to tell you where to find that address, and that'll be the VTAP address. This can be found at VTAP one, whatever that address is. So maybe it's one dot one dot one dot one. Wouldn't be that, but so um, for VTAP wise, this will leaf one will be one 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 one, and V and leaf two will be two 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 two. Again, you wouldn't use those actual IP addresses, but uh, they are, you know, good, ex easy to write. Yes, <laughs> easy for us to distinguish what we're talking about in our diagram. That's as yeah. simple as it can be, but still somewhat complex. Uh, so that means I'd have a, a a frame here that's destined from host two going back to host one. Uh, the entry in there says, "Okay, you're going to get to this MAC address via." VTEP 1, 1.1.1.1 1 .1 .1 .1 in our example, and it will, it, it leaf 2 will then encapsulate with a source of its local VTEP 2.2.2.2 in this case, stick the frame inside, mm -hmm. send it over to leaf 1, 1.1.1.1 will receive it, decapsulate the frame, and then because of its VLAN 101 forwarding table, no, oh, that belongs uh, here, and then forward it out right. the appropriate port. Yeah, so the encapsulated packet will have a VXLAN ID, the VNI, which is 10001, and then LEAF1 has a, a mapping of 10001 to locally to VLAN 101. Then it goes into the VLAN 101 forwarding table, show, show MAC address table, and then uh, because we installed that MAC address, or, or we, we learned that MAC address locally, mm -hmm. and then it forwards it onto the correct port. 